Hey guys, so another World of Warcraft video because this one got me thinking. Uh, so not the last leak, the leak before where he was talking about the Dragon Isles. They were both talking about the Dragon Isles. Um, but the last one was talking about how the um, Warlock Trainer would uh, make fans flip out. Now, I was watching Akalon read it and... Um, someone in his chat had the same idea I did. They were like, Gul'dan? Because quite frankly, Gul'dan would be the only warlock of any notoriety that would make fans flip out. I mean, because the guy's dead. He's been killed twice. Mainline, our mainline Gul'dan was killed in the Tomb of Sargeras when he was ripped apart by demons. And alternate timeline Gul'dan was destroyed when Illidan just, uh, just, destroy him so people will think well how then would it be Gul'dan now remember the leak is not real you know but like Akalon says it's fun to pre pretend like they're real just to kind of get speculations going and stuff like that so how would Gul'dan come back and why quite frankly why would he be training uh dragons how to train your dragon um now, he's a character I don't think people would mind possibly seeing again, but with how would he come back? Well, he is a warlock, and warlocks have a nifty little thing called a soul stone. Uh, basically, think of soul stones, uh, soul stones, phylacteries, stuff like that. Think of them like horcruxes in Harry Potter. They take a piece of their soul, they hide it into something, in this case, a soul, a stone, a gem, and should they die, they can come back. So, same thing with the uh, phylacteries. The lich has its soul, spirit, whatever you want to call it, contained in this phylactery. And they generally hide them somewhere where no one will find them, because if that phylactery is destroyed, that lich is gone for good, because that contains their soul. Um... So Gul'dan, as powerful and uh, egotistical as he was, I don't think he would have gone through his life without creating at least one soul stone. And because he was essentially unstoppable, uh, he never had to use it. But just think that maybe this whole time Gul'dan's been lurking around somewhere, regaining power. Um, now main timeline Gul'dan, and this is the one that I think would be the better choice, is the main timeline. Um, he dies in the Tomb of Sargeras. He goes there looking for the Eye of Sargeras, and he is ripped apart by demons. You know, he he thinks he's, you know, as he dies, he's mortally wounded, and he's like, this cannot be. I'm Gul'dan. I am, you know, darkness incarnate. Uh, so he thinks so highly of himself, but then he's torn apart by demons. But uh, we also see him in the Tomb of Sargeras when we go there. So let me lower this a little bit. Not that. Woo! So here are his remains. Now you're thinking, well, how would he come back if those are, her rem uh, those are his remains? Well, think of it kind of like the, uh, how the player, how when the player revives where you go back to where you died, you see your skeleton lying there. It's almost like you're given a whole new body. Um, so, you know, it, it's very possible that when a warlock uh, outside of gameplay, uh, you know, because there are differences between gameplay and stuff like uh, lore bits, like reviving, you know, we revive things left and right. It's not so easy in the WoW universe. You know, what when Anduin did uh, with the Battle of Lordaeron, that was completely insane. Lore-wise, that is incredible. So, but when he comes back after using the Soul Stone, that's why he would have to lay low for a while. He's got a new body, but it has, like, no power, and he's got to regain his power. Uh, and eventually, I think at some point, he would be found by Rathion because... Who better to train warlocks than a warlock, a true master of these dark 
magics. Um, and of course, I'm sure Rathion, being the amazing black dragon he is, can sense that Gul'dan is not nearly as powerful and he poses no threat. Which would also be a cool setup for later expansions, possibly. You know, because during this time, he's like, oh yes, I'll help you. Uh, and he's slowly gaining his power back. But, yeah. Yeah, I think that's how it would possibly be uh, even remotely uh, feasible for him to come back, as if at some point he created the Soul Stone, and because he was so powerful, he never needed it. Then he was torn apart in uh, the Tomb of Sargeras, and at some point he used it, and he's just been kind of laying low for a while, because you get your body back, you're not nearly as powerful as you used to, and the last thing you want to do after coming back to life is to die again. You know? Kind of reminds me of, like, the whole, um, in, uh, Yu Yu Hakusho, if any of you watch Yu Yu Hakusho, uh, with Hiei, he gets the Jigan Eye, uh, and the Jigan Eye, the, the surgery to get the Jigan Eye drains the person of their demon energy to basically nothing. Uh, and then Hiei thinks, this, oh yeah, I've got the Jigan Eye, I'm gonna leave. Then Shigure, the one who performed the surgery, was like, uh, yeah, I wouldn't do that if I were you, <laughs> because if I just had that thing implanted, I'd want to live long enough to use it. So it's kind of like that. It's kind of like a renewal. So he uses the Soul Stone, he comes back, but he's drained of energy. Um, but that's, like I said, this is, this is just kind of like speculation of a speculation, because that, that line of the Warlock Trainer will make fans flip out Gul'dan would be the only Warlock trainer that would make people go, Oh my god! How many times do we have to kill you, old man? Uh, <laughs> and, you know, I, I, and also, I, lo I still love the character of Gul'dan. He really is an awesome character. I mean, he initiated so much of the Warcraft universe, that, or not the universe, but the lore that we know. The invasion, uh, he, you know, he, he was so powerful that he, he rose the tomb of Sargeras from the bottom of the ocean, and that's where he died, because he was too cocky. Um, the Altar of Damnation training card game. Yeah, I am Darkness Incarnate. Hearthstone. Yeah, he's been... Yeah, the, <laughs> the Frozen Throne Gul'dan, right up there. Ah, it was so ugly. That was Gul'dan back in Warcraft 3. Until he got a makeover and became the Gul'dan we know and love. He was just like a basic looking warlock. Um. But then he got an overhaul, and they made him look so much cooler. Got yeah, evil Medivh. Medivh, when he was being taken over by uh, Sargeras, got Corona. We've got Gul'dan right over there, and Dark Portal. We got Karazhan right there. We have Cadgar. Ah, uh, Dadgar. That's another character I would like to see come back. But, um... Yeah, like I said, I just thought this would be really cool. Like I said, it's... The leak is fake. It, it's fake. Um... If we do know anything, it would be that... The Dragon Isles is most likely where we're going next. I don't think... And Akalon said it, and I think, um... Maybe Taliesin said it. We don't want a cosmic level expansion. We don't. We're, we're, you know, we had Shadowlands with the Jailer, this cosmic level entity. Before that, we were fighting uh, old gods, which are cosmic level. Uh, before that, we had Legion, cosmic level, you know, Argus, the Unmaker. 
you know, stuff like that. We saw fucking Sargeras stab the goddamn planet. We're tired of this cosmic level bullshit. We just, I've said before, I just want to be an adventurer again. You know, not hero of Azeroth, not the savior of Azeroth, not the chosen one, not commander, not general. I just want to be a traveler. You know, so Dragon Isles, the way people are saying, you know, it would look, when we're going back to smaller stories, you know, each zone has its own little story. You know, we're not going to have a big boss. We're going to have things that set up for a big boss, but we're not going to have a big boss. So like, hey, here's 10.0. There's the big boss of it. Uh, we're not going to get slapped across the face with some big boss. Um, and I think Dragon Isles would be a great place to start that kind of what they would call soft reboot. Um you know, change things to the world. Get back to basics. You know, let us go, th you know, keep things that you would find in the newer expansions, like the treasures and stuff. I mean, because I love exploring these beautiful areas and finding little treasures and, and uh, stuff like that, because the team puts so much work into these zones. And unless you have a real reason to explore it, some people don't explore the entire map. Because there's just some parts of the map that just don't have anything going on in them. So the Dragon Isles, I think, would be a really cool place to, to, you know, set up a story, but also get back to basics. Um, you know, stories that start in one zone and lead you to another, not just, oh yeah, just pick wherever the hell you want to go. Um, I think at this point that would be kind of refreshing, even though it's been done in the past for a while, uh, to go back to that. Uh, smaller stories inside, you know, get to know the characters more. You know, you have the overarching story, but then you have individual stories that could possibly lead to other zones. Um, the the leak also mentions stuff about uh, world shaping and um, how, you know, a zone could go from a desert to a forest. So I said, okay, well, maybe the time flows differently kind of like Timeless Isle, how it's it's a temporal anomaly. It, the Timeless Isle is, well, timeless. Time doesn't pass. It never becomes dark. It never. It, it's always the same time of day. So I was thinking maybe Timeless Isles is another temporal anomaly, uh, or the Dragon Isles is a temporal anomaly where time works differently, where it can speed up, hence why you have the Trogs the basically where the start of it all, the original Trogs, how they're so much more advanced and smarter than the Trogs we know and love because time flows differently. So it kind of might be like, a, think of it like the hyperbolic time chamber in Dragon Ball Z, how like, you know, you go in and a day on Earth is like a year in there. Uh... So think of kind of like that, how it might work the same way, how outside a uh, few minutes or an hour may pass, but for them it might be months or years or whatever, hence why the Trogs are so much more advanced. But um, like I said, this is all, it's all just a theory, a game theory. No, um, because I know people are going to look at it like, John, it's not real. It's not, uh, I know it's not real. But, like Akalon would say, it's fun to speculate. It's fun to take it like it was real and make theories about it. Because then you might think of things that could possibly be happening. Or things that could come up in the future. Or things about characters that you haven't thought about in a while. So, to, to think about how that small line of the Warlock trainer will make fans flip out talking about Gul'dan and how he could possibly come back, because then it gets you into Gul'dan lore, and you get to learn more about him, and then you see about the Soul Stone, uh, and kind of relate it to, oh, oh yeah, it's like a Horcrux, and you know, you store your soul in part of it, and if you die, you come back. Um, and how, how this would possibly fit into the next expansion and possibly set up for future expansions. 
you know, it's it's just fun to speculate. It doesn't matter if it's real or not. So like like I said in the beginning, take it with a great a whole bag of salt. But um, it's just fun to speculate. You know, it's that cowl of Gul'dan. I am darkness incarnate. The Bale Spider. I like that set though. So the Storm Shadow Council. Yeah, Gul'dan was always a cool character. Gul'dan's Henry reforged. It's like, ugh. It's like, oh, I'm dead. Hearthstone. Was that Metzen's? Nope, Samwise. Huh. Yeah, all the bits of Gul'dan that you fight in Outland. His skeleton, the skull of a very ugly looking Cadgar. Warcraft 3 Gul'dan. The tomb of Sodgaris. There we go, there's Metzen's. Wow. That 95? Jesus. That's so it looks like Thrall, and in turn looks like Metzen, because Thrall looks like Metzen. It's kind of crazy how that is. Metzen. Drink, hell scream. Chogal. Yeah, he's had so much. And I think I've talked about him as a character before, but he is such a cool character. And he was so cool that he brought him back in alternate timeline. You know, this guy could have been such a an ally to Azeroth and then such a powerful shaman if that was the route he was able to take. But, you know, instead of, you know, going to the throne of the elements and letting the elements come to him he kind of forced it and i've said before in other videos the elements are despite that they are raw powerful unbridled elemental power they're very fragile and sensitive uh they don't like being called upon or forced to do anything uh that's why when you see characters you know casting elemental spells they call you know ask for their permission now for us as the player it's assumed we already have their permission because it'd be really stupid really inconvenient and really annoying every time we pass a spell that has an element attached to it you know for us to be like spirits of the earth spirits of fire you know that would be so stupid so we just go ahead and use it from a player standpoint, because that just makes sense. You're not gonna sit there and have this whole thing of spirits of the earth, come to my aid, you know? But uh, they're very sensitive and they were coming to Gul'dan and, you know, he was reaching out and they were going towards him and then they kind of pulled back and he kind of reached out and tried to force it and they were like, nope, we're out of here. And uh, instead the fell found him and uh, he became a warlock. So, but I would like to see a Gul'dan that isn't evil. You know, I want to see what Gul'dan could have been had he not become a warlock. Or maybe still become a warlock, but then on our side. But he was just so prideful and egotistical and narcissistic. And he just felt like he was the most powerful. And that's one reason why he got ripped apart by demons. Because he overestimated the situation. You know, he was like, oh, I'm Gul'dan, I'm Darkness Incarnate, I'm this, I'm that, I'm Batman. Uh, but he didn't expect anyone to actually kill him. So, I would like, not a redemption, but just like a what-if scenario. You know, if Gul'dan was to help us. Because having him as an ally, fuck. To make things so much easier for things. So many uh, crises that we've gone through would be so easily, not easily dealt with, but with someone as powerful as that, with uh, scores of demons at his, his fingertips, powerful fell magics, and 
Fuck. Anyways, but yeah, that's what I think would happen if it was indeed Gul'dan coming back as a warlock trainer to train these dragons um, and how it would possibly happen it was a soul stone. Soul stone or some kind of necromancy on Rathion's part, which I really wouldn't put past him. But I think the soul stone and uh, Gul'dan kind of, you know, skulking about in the shadows because he's lost his strength uh, just seems more plausible. Like I said, if you're coming back from the dead, the last thing you want to do is put yourself in a situation where you're going to die again. So he's going to skulk around, and it might take years for him to gain his former strength. But he's still probably more powerful than, say, the dragons that he's training. So, but yeah, um, between that and his character, I would love to see him come back. Uh, what do you guys think? What character would you like to see? Would, like, would you like to see Wuldan come back? Um, let me know. You guys know the drill. I'll see you guys later. Bye, guys.